the tracks. I remember the first time I walked in there, I just wanted to sob. And I've been to other places on mission trips. This was, this was the realest thing, I guess, that I'd ever seen. And I was very overwhelmed by it. Something that they've never experienced before is to actually go into a schoolroom and learn. And we've seen them just come out of their shells and they're totally different people, even after the first year. Our ministry is called Manos de Cristo and we run a sponsorship program. So we have about 50 children that we sponsor to go to school in Guatemala all the way from preschool up to university level at this point. You know, a lot of them will grow up and by early teens they're in gangs or they're they're getting pregnant and, and getting married and things like that. And we're letting them know through education you can actually, you know, you can move into better neighborhoods and, and, and have good jobs and things like that. The whole community is on board. They know our ministry. They've seen the successes of the ministry, so they they are happy to have us there. And so they become dreamers, and God has placed uh, dreams on their heart. I think of one little girl we have. Her name is Angeli. Angeli was very shy, didn't talk a whole lot, but she has grown up. She's been very consistent in going to school and doing her work. and. I just got a letter from her to her sponsor last year that said, I want to be a doctor when I grow up. It's just impossible to understand that that little girl never dreamed when she started school that, that she could be a doctor when she grows up. But through the hope that she has seen through Jesus and education, she has that dream now. And we want her to realize it. <laughs> we want to see it happen. I think just being able to see a child that she was talking about, a child, we've had so many instances of this where, where children are so shy, they're so withdrawn, just little girls that are so scared, to be honest, um, totally blossom once they get into school. We had one little girl named Jenny, and when she decided what she wanted to do for her trade and wanted to move on to trade school, she was told that trade school was too expensive. We prayed about it and we really felt like Jenny shouldn't be limited by what the schooling costs. We talked to some of our faithful sponsors and they said, you know what, we want to pay for Jenny's schooling. And they sponsored Jenny and she graduated a couple of years ago, is working successfully in the field that she wanted to work in. And she wasn't limited and she's helping out her single mom and two little sisters. We have so many sponsors that sponsor their kids from kindergarten through. For them to be able to see that transition, then to see all of the things that are available to them after the fact is, is a huge reward. It's not like once they get into our program, our ministry, that okay, they're, they're good. Uh, it's a constant ministry where we have to continually reach out to them, um, see where they're at. I'm thinking of a young man in our program named Mario whose mom basically just put him out in the street when he was eight, maybe. And she just, she had other children and she, he was a handful behavior wise. And she just decided that she couldn't take it anymore. And he would sleep in the concrete construction tubes that the construction workers had on the side. That's where Mario was sleeping before someone took him in. Now Mario is, I think, 18. He's had an education. He worked really hard because he was so far behind from not going to school for so many years that he would go on Saturdays to catch up. And last time we were in Guatemala, he said, do you think you could find someone to help me with English classes? Because I want to run your teams when they come down here to Guatemala. We are bringing the light of Jesus to each child one by one through the sponsorship program. Education is secondary. Our real primary ministry is to bring Jesus to those children, but then it also goes into the entire household. We feel like the dreaming is important because God has never limited anybody from the circumstances that they were born into or the circumstances that they're living in. He's used people from humble circumstances and simple lives to do amazing things throughout history. And we believe that he wants to use some of these children to do some of those amazing things.